Hi guys, hello. Uh, welcome to the video blog on can you really flush Oracle Shared Pool? This question seems to be a little interesting when it uh, you know uh, actually striked me. Uh, I was looking at uh, some of the performance issues and for trial and errors, I have been flushing out the Shared Pool and I recognize there is something peculiar inside uh, flushing up the Shared Pool. So I just wanted to convey what is it exactly. But instead of you know conveying it what exactly it is, I wanted to show that in the form of some numbers or the results so that you understand uh, what exactly is flushing the shared pool. So uh, I am sure that you must be you must have done all this flushing the shared pool already. Uh, but you know as I said, I would like to give you some insights what happens exactly. So I have picked up a, a few of the case studies. Uh, it is not few of the case studies from the case studies that I have learned. We would be, uh, you know, executing uh, some of, I mean, step by step approach to understand what exactly is this uh, blog means. So the scripts, the uh, SQL files, whatever I have used in this blog, you can find them in uh, in this video. You can find them in the blog. So with this video, I just wanted to explain what exactly is my blog means. All right. So before I actually step forward into what I mean, executions of uh, the exercise. Let us understand what is shared pool. So we might be already knowing it. Shared pool is one of the memory components in the SGA when you start up the instance. But within the SGA a shared pool, there are further components like library cache, result cache, data dictionary cache, and something called reserved caches and uh, some other things. But these are the main components when we speak about, isn't it? And we know library cache is something that will uh, keep record of all the SQLs which are executing, and this is where uh, the instance will decide whether soft parsing or hard parsing of an SQL statement should be done and optimizer defining an execution plan. Everything happens in the shared pool, isn't it? And then, you know, result cache is uh, very important, which is very popular from LevenG and where uh, for your SQL statements, which requires an intermediate memory uh, to store the result of one SQL and pass it to the another SQL. This is where the result cache will basically used for. And uh, that can be automatically used by the Oracle uh, whenever it feels so. Or you can manually also say that this particular query's result cache should be, uh, th this particular query's result should be cached or something like that with the help of the Oracle hint. And uh, if you have gone through my performance tuning course, you must be already knowing what is the result cache and purpose of it. And we have done some exercise as well. And then, you know, uh, coming to this data dictionary cache, we know that data dictionary cache will something which will have the record of all the metadata inside the Oracle instance. It includes users in the database, tables in the database, objects in the database, permissions of each and every objects created in the database, everything. So that is what data dictionary does. And data dictionary is like a copy of what exactly your systems SOX table spaces will contain about the objects in the database, permissions, etc., etc. So every time when your instance starts up, data dictionary cache is loaded with the content whichever is required it will pull from the system table space so that's the concept of data dictionary cache so i hope we know what exactly you know these uh, co internal components of shared pool means now our environment is oracle enterprise linux or freeware uh, which is available open in oracle website and then uh, 11g r2 which is also available open in oracle website so we are using our ex i mean we are running exercise on top of these two and uh, before we actually do a flush of the shared pool, let us see what exactly your library cache have. What are the number of contents your library cache have, and uh, <clears throat> what contents your result cache have, and what contents do your data dictionary cache have? So to do that, I have my uh, one of the environments on top of your screen. I would be basically running up uh, the exercise here. So let me start up with checking up the components in the result cache. So I have this one. So if you see here. I can see the memory report of the result cache. There is nothing at the moment. Uh, there is total memory of this. It is fixed memory. There is nothing used. So how do you say that it is used or not? When I actually, if, you know, cache a result, you know, uh, result cache, then you will understand, you know, uh, what is it exactly? Uh, because the result cache is not, you know, filled with some memory. Uh, let us actually fill something into this result cache with the help of Oracle hint. So I'm running an SQL statement. Uh, in which I'm using an Oracle hint saying that it has to cache the result into the result cache. So let me run that SQL statement. So this is the SQL statement. I'm really saying with the help of the hint that it has to cache. 
So this is the output. That means this 12 rows, whatever was the output of this result cache SQL statement should be part of the memory report now. So let me run the memory report and see. Yes. Now if you observe carefully here dynamic memory, there is zero bytes. And if you see here dynamic memory has been increased. Now that means number of SQL blocks that it has got number of results that it has got is only one. That means I have run an SQL statement where I'm saying that cache the result into the result cache. So now I have some content in my uh, result cache. Now let me check what is the content of my library cache. And to do that, I will be simply going and checking how many number of SQL statements do you have in V dollar SQL. That is one of the simplest method, right? Because I know library cache is something which will hold the information of all the SQL statements. If I go and query V dollar SQL, how many number of SQLs does it have got? That will actually tell me the content of my library cache. So I would just say select count of star from V dollar SQL. Now, please remember that in the library cache, there is information about 607 SQL statements in the database. This is another one. And we have result cache loaded with some data. We have library cache also loaded with some uh, SQL statements, which is already there. And now let us see the content of the data dictionary cache. And to do that, I'll be using, you know, uh, something called V dollar row cache. Uh, that will give me the statistics of the data dictionary cache, which is already there. So it will be giving me statistics of number of gets and misses from the data dictionary cache. But still, this information will tell me if the gets and everything is the same even uh, later after flushing, that will give me some hint that whether the data dictionary cache is flushed or not. This is how I basically try to use. And now we are ready to start the activity. We have flushed. We know that data dictionary cache, library cache and result cache are full with data. Now let us perform the flush. So alter system flush shared pool. Now if I say this, firstly, let us see whether the library cache is flushed or not. Excellent. From 607 SQL statements, it has come down to 69 SQL statements. Please do not think what are the 69 or 49 SQL statements. These are the SQL statements which will be running after flushing up the shared pool by the Oracle instance automatically, right? So you can see that there is a drastic down as soon as you flush. That means library cache has been flushed. That's the one point I should say. Now let us see if the result cache has been flushed or not. No, seriously not. The same amount of memory which was showing us before flushing the shared pool, the same memory is also showing us now here. What does it mean? This means that when you actually flush the shared pool, library cache content has been flushed but the result cache content did not flush. So it is still there. So make a point. And now let us see what exactly happened to my dictionary cache. I can see the similar gets, you know, it is uh, 341 and it is increased now. That means it did not start from the beginning. It is using the same set of uh, the statistics or the misses which is happening in the memory. It is going on top of it. That means I can also predict that data dictionary cache was also not flushed when you have actually given alter system flush shared pool. This point is something very, very important for us to understand now. So that is the main, uh, you know, uh, problem statement that I have given in the block title. Can you really flush shared pool or in Oracle instance? The answer to tell you is no. So what exactly happens when you give alter system uh, uh, flush shared pool? it will only flush out your library cache, but not your result cache, not your data, data dictionary cache. And in case if you wanted to flush, you know, there is no point of flushing the data dictionary cache, it is always important and it is always consistent. That's the reason you don't need to do flushing the data dictionary cache anytime. But in case if you're running out of the memory, and if you're too much of caching your results, in case if you want to clean out your uh, result cache, there is a method to do that. So how do we do? It is not through alter system flush shared pool. Do not think that after giving alter system flush shared pool, your result cache will be flushed. You will have to issue this one. So dot flush in the same package. Now you see the report, it should be cleaning up the result cache. Yes, it is done. So this is how you can manually flush the result cache. So this is the conclusion to tell you that, to tell you that what is the uh, problem statement. Can you really flush shared pool? No, you cannot. What exactly happens when you give alter system flush shared pool? It will only flush your library cache, but not the other components. And in case if you want to flush result cache also, 
uh, if the SQL statements have manually cached something into the result cache, then you will have to issue uh, dbms underscore result cache package and then flush procedure. That's it. And the data dictionary cache, there is no point of basically flushing it at any given point of time. So that's the reason uh, the data dictionary cache will remain the same. It should be always, uh, you know, it because it is consistent, you hardly have some, you know, uh, object level changes in the database. Whenever that happens, automatically data dictionary cache brings those metadata into the memory whenever it is required. So I think that that will not create any problem in any of the Oracle environments I have seen so far. Okay. So that's all about this, uh, you know, uh, can you really flush Oracle shared pool? That's the blog. So we have understood with the help of a small exercise what happens exactly in the Oracle uh, when you are flushing up the shared pool exactly. Hope you have, you know, loved the video. And in case if you wanted to keep in touch with uh, the next set of uh, the videos that we will be releasing one after the other, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, you will be notified by the YouTube whenever we release an interesting video article like this. Thank you. Hope to be in touch with you with our very interesting topics again going forward. Thank you once again. Bye-bye.